and you shall make of these a sacred anointing oil, blended as by the perfumer. It shall be a holy anointing oil. Now y'all see that one, right? That my best friend back there too. I'm gonna tell you that too. You, I'm looking around. You, nobody know. You know what's blessing? Don't nobody know me like him. I've seen everything. He was my mistress. He didn't know if I was saved or not. They rest have called me three straight weeks to see if I go to the club. I testified about it. After that third week, he said, you will be really saved now. That's my mistress stick right there, y'all. Go to Ecclesiastes 10 and 1. It says, dead flies make the presumed perfumer's ointment to give off a stench, an odor. So a little folly outweighs wisdom and honor. Y'all, we don't, I'm going to try my best to be as brief as possible. I'm setting my timer now. Today, we're going to talk about the fact that the condition of the oil matters. The condition of the oil matters. Amen. If any man speak, let him speak of the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God gives him. That God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Somebody say amen. 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 You may be seated. The condition of the oil matters. And God's been dealing with me on that. And, and y'all been all in my sermon, and I'm going to tell you why. Look at my first point. Look at my first point. Major issue with Christianity, the lack of accountability. Boy, y'all, y'all all in my sermon and stuff. The main one, one major issue with Christianity is the lack of accountability. Too many people are deceived to think that Christianity is based only on belief. Uh, the enemy has sent a deception upon the people of God to make them think that as long as they believe in Jesus, they don't have to live a life that is right before God. This deception is causing people to miss out on the power of God and to create an atmosphere where Christians are blessed by God with precious oil. Somebody say precious oil. But, but the oil is contaminated sometimes and worthless. We want to be saved and blessed and highly favored. We want to be anointed and appointed. We want promotion and prosperity. We want all these things and there's nothing wrong with any of those things. But sometimes we don't want to be accountable. You know, in, in this service, before every service, we go and we pray and we touch on every empty seat inside this house. Which I'll make sure we continually do that. But when the people come into the house, they got to find some saints who are accountable. Who they can emulate. Amen? This is why we can't be so caught up in our personal perception and view of salvation. We can't be so, so preoccupied with prosperity that we forget about accountability. Now, I thank God over the years, God has blessed, and I, me and my wife, we just, y'all get tired of hearing it, it's all right, but I drove for years down there, and my wife said, I want to teach down there too at the coast, and, and God blessed us that we both teach at the coast, yeah. try together, and I tell you this, and it was something else, her starting salary was higher than my starting salary. Right. Tell me God won't do it. But one thing that we've said and we put in our heart, we're going to still be accountable to God in the midst of prosperity. Yet I had somebody last my little Corolla and told me that a preacher shouldn't be driving that. Right. Had an old man to come to me and said, this preacher should be driving that. And God blessed, amen, God blessed. When well, she got something she wanted, it's sitting there. Y'all know what it is. But the, but the problem is, the thing is, I said, Lord, even in getting the blessing, we still must be accountable. I want people to look at us and say, these are men and women of God. They are blessed. God has given them some stuff. He has blessed them the house and stuff. But I want people to know that we're still accountable to God. So we got to live in a way that's an example for younger people, older people, everybody. This is why we need relationship and religion. Now, Pastor always going to tell you that sometimes something we preach, we can watch how we say it. I've said it before. I had a whole sermon series on relationship and not religion. But the Bible says that we should have religion. That's right. the word, right? So if I'm wrong, I, you know, that, that was the season I was in, and, and God has given me some knowledge on that one. Because true religion calls for us to live righteous. Go to James 1 and 27. James 1 and 27, y'all know this. It says, pure religion. It's in the Bible, right? And undefiled before God and the Father is this. So what is pure religion? To 
visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction. Those are poor people, right? And I want to say, Sister Zakia, God put in my heart, we're talking about those people who are, who are homeless. God put in my heart, maybe we need to do, do something for them at the turn of the, of the year. You have a ministry where we can begin to bless them with some food. Well, you just got to give them what you have left over, but the church can bless them to have a mission to feed people. I told y'all before, we believe in God for 10% of all of our income next year to be go toward outreach. And God will make a way. Y'all don't believe that is not him? We already, in, what, the, what a difference a year makes. Already in one year, God has turned around a lot of stuff in this house. Amen. To the plus side, in the black. And that's it. But God said the next step is to make sure that we're an accountable ministry. So, so, and also it says, and to keep himself unspotted from the world. It is not true that God does not want us to have a religion. There's nothing wrong with religion. James makes that point clear. However, for religion to matter, it must be pure. Somebody say pure. The Greek word for religion is threskia. Threskia, and it means worship as expressed by ritual acts. It is not what you believe in your heart. It's about what you do and what people see you do. Hear me, hear me. See, Jesus came up against the religious uh, leaders because they were more concerned with what people see them, saw them do, what people see, than what they, they had inside their heart. However, Jesus is still concerned with what you do. He is. Because, because you can pray for me, but I, sometimes I need you to do something. See, this is, this is why I say, you know, we can't, you know, we, it's, it's, it's good that, that she's praying for people. But hear what she said. She said a man she's praying for. Him. It's hard to feed, it's hard to pray for somebody who's starving. It's hard to pray for Jesus did it all the time, didn't he? He did all the time. He did not only just think and have good intentions, but he did something. And so religion is not the same as tradition. Because religion is the outward manifestation of your reverence and your worship of God. James broke it down into two categories. The first was to help those that cannot help themselves and those that cannot pay you back. He made a point in that. Because if you bless somebody, if you bless somebody that cannot pay you back, that's when you're doing God's will. I've been in churches where sometimes you can sow a Lord's seed, but they can get it right back to you. I, 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 I've been in places where sometimes you can help somebody out, but it's only investing in them because later on they're going to do something else for you. But the real blessing comes when you bless somebody who cannot. I don't mean they will not. I mean they just cannot. Have you ever get somebody to give you a blessing one time and you just know I can't even do nothing for what you just gave me? And I wish I could. I wish I could just say, look, I'm going to bless them next week with this. But you know, your, your, your check I already spoken for. The way your bank account is set up. I just can't bless your bank. I really wish I could. But you know what? God made that way for a reason. Because God said, I'm going to do a blessing from them, for them. And so I had to find somebody really broke. Y'all better hit me. I had to find somebody really struggling so I can bless, have you to bless them. Now get this, Luke 14 and 13. And before I go down, I want to tell you this. Just because you bless them, I did not obligate them anyway. Because see, sometimes you think I'm going to bless you. I want to come back from God. If I bless one way too, because God said do, do it, he going to bring it back seven ways too. Luke 14, 13 says, but when you give a feast, read this, he said, invite the poor and the crippled, the lame and the blind. Invite the worst of the worst, the people who are destitute, people who can't do anything. And you will be blessed because they cannot repay you. He said, that's why you're going to be blessed because they can't, they would love to say, let me give you some money back and do something to you. But they can't repay you. And he said, for you be repaid at the resurrection of the just. Get this, get this. Then that's what God is saying when you do for the, the widows and the orphans. When you bless people who cannot bless you back, that's real religion. Sometimes in church, we just pass around the hat. Y'all better hear me. I do for you, you do for me. I, I come to yours, you come to mine. But that ain't what God wants. God wants you to go to people sometimes who cannot help you back. Y'all better so, 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 but the second part, I gotta tell you all this. And, and, and he, he, I've already said before, but this talks about blessing somebody who cannot bless you back. When we first started this mission, we first, you know, I took over. We had some stuff we had to take care of, some, some bills, and my mind was just dead free, dead free, dead free. So we were paying and paying, trying to pay off the van. We had to pay off some more little small stuff. So it's important to remember. Y'all remember that? We were paying off some stuff. And you know what? Things got tight. God blessed the man of God. 
It says, I want you to bless this man of God with a seed of $1,000. And he blessed me with $1,000. And I felt so bad because my church didn't have nowhere near to give him back that $1,000. He said, God told me to do this. And he did. Do you know he eventually retired? Y'all might know what I'm talking about. I ain't going to come out loud. And do you know what? About three years ago, was it three years ago? His church was paid off. He didn't even go into double digits of long as inside that church. Church was paid off. They burnt the mortgage because God says, I got to give it to somebody who cannot bless you back because I'm going to take care of it and they don't even have a note no more. I got to get out of here. But the second part is the part that we don't want to deal with sometimes. Because it says that pure religion is to keep ourselves unspotted from the world. We don't like this part sometimes, but it is also a component of true religion. We have to live in a world and not become spotted by that world. But too often we are indistinguishable from the world. Too often we are more comfortable in worldly settings than in the presence of God. We can sit around and talk for days but we'll talk to people about nonsense sometimes. But how long do we stay in the presence of God when we begin to pray. He talking to me right now. And, 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 and you got some good people. I like mean, me and the one we talk for a long time. We talking about good stuff. Amen. Mostly good stuff. Amen. Talk about football and sports a little bit too. But we talking about building. But sometimes we can sit at our job talking about mess and sit right there for for hours inside of messy conversation, messy situations. But then we get to start praying and we get ten minutes. And we feel like we did something. Am I being real? That means you've been spotted, baby. <laughs> you've been spotted because you have more of an appetite for the things of the world than you do for God. There's families. I watch TV. Y'all know that. I got Hulu, Netflix, cable, all of it. Amazon Prime. I love television. But God says, you know what? You got to make sure that you care just as much about me as you do this thing for the world. Your appetite has to be of the things of God. To be unspotted is an individual responsibility for us to be different from what people see in the world. We have all been washed by the blood of Jesus if we're saved. It is now our job to live in a manner that keeps us unspotted by the world. We have to keep the flies out of the oil. Now, 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 go to my next point because we're talking about, we're talking about the cost of the oil. Because I don't want y'all to just say, I'm going to go preach on you, preach on you, say you need to do right. But I got to show you why God wants you to live in a certain way. Because of the cost of the oil. The oil on your life is costly. It is costly. One of the greatest deceptions of the enemy is to get the people of God to devalue themselves. To, to devalue their calling. Hey, ain't nobody. I, not God ain't doing it in my life. And, and to devalue their God. And, and, and God ain't talking to me. He ain't saying that. And to devalue their anointing. He wants us to think that we don't matter and that we have very little worth. If he can deceive us into not seeing a, a value in our God and what he has done and is currently doing in our lives, then he can get us to treat it as though it were common. Hear me. What God has done in your life is not a common thing. God does a great work in our life. He does great things, right? The devil wants you to see it as common. It ain't nothing to you, nothing to what's going on in your life. And when something is common, we don't treasure it and we don't guard it like we should. We got clothes in our closet. There's some of those clothes we don't wash delicately anyway. Some of those clothes we just throw it inside and put it on hot and keep going. We don't even change the setting, the permanent press, or, or to, 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 to hand wash. We don't do those things. So I, I, I'm a shoe person. I love shoes. Now, I got some shoes that they throw on and cut grass in. Yeah. I got some shoes that as soon as I get to the house, like a little kid, I got my little, I, I bought some special cleaner for it. I bought some special cleaner. I got, I got a special brush. And I put them there because, you know what? I found value in them. And those shoes that have no value, they all up in the bed. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that true? This is what the devil wants us to do. We treasure and guard anything we find value in. Uh, my life, my loved ones, my home, and my valuables, they're all insured. They are. I'm just being real. I got, I got home up, look, saints. Get homeowners insurance. Get renters insurance. Get car insurance. All that stuff that you value, you better insure. If you value your life, you need to be insured too. 
tell y'all before I got some insurance on me, I got more on me than I'm worth more days than alive now. But I want to make sure that when I, if God forbid I have to leave here early, I don't want her desperate over there. I don't want her desperate, you know. I believe that, you know, God, if she's young, she's a pretty woman, she might have to marry again, you know. She might find somebody close as good as me. But if she does, uh, I don't I want her to make that decision because it was her decision, not our desperation. I don't want her looking crunchy. I want her, the next Sunday she show up out the field, if, if that happens, I want her to be looking good. She's going to be sad because it's me. But at the same time, she, I want her to make sure that because I value my life, I had to ensure it. I value my children, so I want to make sure they're going to be good in some case something happens to me. It's not that I want to die. Nobody wants to die. We all want longevity. But in case it does not happen, i got to prepare for that. So, 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 therefore, because they are valuable to me, I don't treat them as though they're common. Uh, there's some things I don't have insurance on because they're not that valuable to me. Uh, I guard them. I protect them. I value their lives and I treat them like I value them. I'm going to tell y'all this about insurance. Y'all need to make sure that you ain't got insurance on your phone and I have insurance in your life. 